I'm here at the FT Weekend Live Festival with Heston Blumenthal. Heston, <laughs> we just had a fantastic talk from you about taste and about the evolution of taste. Yeah. Can you tell me, uh, you know, what your thinking is now with the new Fat Duck and how you're thinking about taste? I suppose what I've done is I, I through questioning everything, yeah. and we don't question enough, just ask why, like an annoying kid. Then you keep questioning, it's like peeling off layers of an onion. And in fact, we want to go back to find out why we do this. Why do we do this? It's because of. But we we don't go back far enough. So through going back far enough and being open-minded to keep on asking those questions, in fact, I've realised that the head grew on top of the body to protect the heart and the gut, and, and the gut because this is where babies are nurtured. So what we see and what we hear and what we smell and what we taste, what we feel, actually, that's the essence of life because it's the eating cooked food is what made us human. The only thing we need to do, the only thing that we need to do consciously to live, we breathe without knowing it, is eat. So the emotions that are created by that, not just by the, by the time the food's in the mouth, actually it's probably quite simple. We've all seen something that sparks off a feeling. We all hear things, they've heard things that spark off a feeling. Then we smell things that spark off a feeling and, we t and then we put food in on it. So the complexity of that, ultimately, I think life is all about feelings. And if I was, if I had a genie come out of a lamp, I'd go, right, what do you want, feelings? I want to be, I want curiosity or inquisitiveness, I want adventure, I want playfulness, I want excitement. I want, that's what we all want, we never lose the kid in us. And food has the ability to do that with storytelling, nostalgia, um, and just wonderment. So that feeling I had when I went to the new Fat Duck, which was as though I had been in a dream, and I walked out and I thought, it, I can't quite believe some of those things happened, that I had some of those feelings. Mm. That is what you're trying to sort of explore and to do with, with food. No, it's the nicest thing to hear because it's, <laughs> we're too, too often with, with food, we are, there's pomposity that comes with this. And, there's, and, and with wine and with cars and anything that sort of can be seen material in some respects. In fact, our emotions are our emotions. If you like something, if something just gives you a sense of warmth and happiness and excitement, you don't have to justify it to anybody. So you say, okay, what's your favourite ice cream? Somebody says, well, vanilla. Why? Because I love the little flecks. No, no, no. You just go, because I love it. <laughs> you don't have to justify why. Why do we have to justify our emotions? And with that, it means you can just. You, there's so much, every second on this planet, there's something to enjoy. So, do you think that our taste is really determined by expectation and anticipation? I think our emotional response to the food that we're putting in our mouths is absolutely heavily influenced by that. So therefore, what you see, if you see something that's sharp, because of the memory, sharp, when language starts, sharp can be something touch, taste, smell, sound. So our brain is going to have millions of reactions and the synapses working out right. Okay, okay, I mean, to know what to expect. And that expectation, if we didn't have that, then we wouldn't be where we were. And unfortunately, it's a balance between the two. Creativity is, should be without expectation. Perfection, which is not creativity, you would need to know the outcome, which is like you're doing two plus two is always going to equal four. So if it equals five, you're going to be a little bit disorientated. Thank you so much, Heston. It's just been great hearing Thanks. about your amazing ideas about taste.